Good morning, Kalinchi, and welcome to this, our Father's Day service. And can I just say a big thank you to the Reverend Raina Dare for allowing me the opportunity to virtually connect with you all once more. I'd like to begin with a few words from Psalm 119. Explain your truth to me, and I will obey it. With all my heart, I will do whatever you teach me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for all the creativity we have at our fingertips, which enables us to stay connected as a family of believers. We are thankful for the light of another day, and may we use this day to rekindle the flames of hope for our future and the aspirations we each hold. May we use this day to glorify our Lord God Almighty, the source of all light, all love and all hope. And we give thanks indeed for our place in the company of all those great and faithful servants who have come before us. May we always remember their good works in thy name and some of the wonderful examples of the Christian faith that we have been given through the dedicated lives they lived. Bless this our time of prayer, of worship and reflection. For we ask these things in and through your precious name. And now may we say together the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now the first reading I'd like to share with you all today ties in to the first section of our sermon a little later. And it is taken from Genesis chapter 17, the first 10 verses. And it is the covenant which was made between God and Abraham. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to those offspring who come after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you, the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you, throughout their generations. Amen. Now, for something just a little bit different, here's one for the kids. Hi boys and girls, it's Linda here with another little chat for you. I'm still missing you all, hope you're all safe and well. This, boys and girls, is Roxy. This is our family dog. And as you can see, she's a little bit hyper. Yeah, you're hyper, yes. Now, sometimes Roxy will do some 
tricks. She's not always very obedient, but we'll give it a go. Come here. Sit. Give me the ball. Good girl. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Sit. Give me the ball. Where's your belly? Where's your belly? No belly rubs today, boys and girls. Where's your belly? for today is it's Father's Day and it is important to do what mum and dad says but you know something boys and girls sometimes people might ask us to do things that we shouldn't be doing and sometimes we might be asked to do things that make us very uncomfortable and you don't have to do those so remember stay safe and stay happy and be obedient to mum and dad it's very important and be good to your pets if anybody wants to come and walk Roxy for me, perfect. See you next time. Bye. Now the following musical treat is an amalgamation of the great talents of two wonderful women. So a big thank you to Claire for her playing and to my friend Janine for her singing. And believe it or not, neither of them did this jointly. It was a virtual collaboration, so fingers crossed you all enjoy it. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever be. speak the truth in our love together and our fellowship. Save us, our Lord, we pray, from the arrogance of telling others what they should or should not believe, what they should or should not do. Give us courage and clarity to humbly witness to our own faith without harming or oppressing others. And we remember today all those who have suffered fear and persecution in your name. Strengthen them and bring peace to wherever our brothers and sisters are at risk. And we ask indeed that each and every person in our world today be free to express their heartfelt beliefs, their honest questionings, and that we each allow other people the liberty to do likewise. And though we claim the right to advance our own thoughts in matters of faith and of the spirit, help us never to wrong others or attack them or undermine them in any way as we do so. Help us, Lord, to be partners with whoever walks in your name beside us. Help us to focus on fellowship and collective understandings. Help us to appreciate the individual choice and reason of each and every believer. And help us to live in peace and harmony. 
We ask all these things in and through your precious name. Amen. Now for a second reading today, I'd like to share with you all, surprise, a little something from my, probably my favourite spiritual religious author, John O'Donoghue. And this being Father's Day, I thought that this was very apt. And this poem is about the threshold of manhood. As you leave the blurred wood you entered while still a boy, and light clarifies around your emerging manly form, may you discover gradually a natural confidence in your body. May your new strength be graceful, as you learn to carry yourself with a dignity that is sure, bringing your gestures and expression into an easy harmony and rhythm. May you never feel the need to be coarse or force yourself. Rather, may you receive your manhood with grace and mindful ease. Then, at one with your own elegance, your presence will claim its radiance. May you awaken confidently to the feminine within you and learn to integrate the beauty of intuition and feeling so that your sensitivity kindles and your heart is trusted. That you may slowly grow to trust the silence of the masculine as the home of your stillness. Though it will always be difficult to find the words for what you feel, may you find ease in that awkwardness until gradually from beneath the gravel of stuttered sounds, the pure flow of you emerges. Be gentle with yourself. Learn to integrate the negative, harnessing its force to cross the boundaries that would confine you. Love the life of your mind, furnishing it ever with new thought so that your countenance glows with the joy of being alive. Be vigilant and true to an inner honour that will not allow anger or resentment to make you captive. Always have the courage to change, welcoming those voices that call you beyond yourself. Beyond your work and action, remain faithful to your heart for you to deepen and grow into a man of dignity and nobility. I've called today's sermon, or rather asked a question of today's sermon, which is simply, who are you? Now, once upon a time, I was a team leader with Child Evangelism Fellowship and I was also a member of the overseas youth team within the Presbyterian Church in Ireland. And I loved working with children back then and I still love it today. And one of the children's choruses that I recall fondly we used to sing was called Father Abraham. And it involved a lot of fun, uh, a lot of silly actions and all the kids used to love it. And I recall more than one occasion where I couldn't even play my guitar because I was laughing so hard at all the other leaders doing the actions. And so when I began to think about Father's Day and the role of the father, this tune and a few other things sprung to mind this week that I'd like to share with you today. Now it would be hard to speak of biblical father figures and not start with Abraham. Abraham is often referred to as the patriarch of the three greatest or largest monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Abraham was of course called by God, as we heard in Genesis 17, to build a new nation of Israel in the promised land of Canaan. And Abraham's strength lay in his great faithfulness to God even to the point where he was willing to sacrifice his own son, Isaac, at God's command, 
An action which raises horror to me personally as a parent and a story which I don't mind acknowledging that I struggle with. However, Abraham was promised that his offspring would inherit the promised land and this was the treasured covenant made between God, Abraham and Abraham's descendants. And so the sons of Abraham, the promised offspring, and the descendants of all the Jewish nation began with Isaac, born of Abraham's wife Sarah. And Jesus' very genealogy is traced indeed back to Isaac also. So the significance of the father figure cannot be underestimated, and it is fitting with the culture and therefore the writings of the time, with much lesser credence being given and attributed to those women who bore the sons. And this patriarchal dominance was very much the archetype for many generations that followed. But I'd stop now for fear I ruin the moment by verging on a feminist rant about patriarchy. But of course it isn't only scripture that we find explorations of the father figure. My mind was cast back to the days of my English A-level, where one of the books I studied and which still remains one of my favourites today, was Wuthering Heights and where to start. Catherine and Hindley's father, Mr Earnshaw, adopts this waif-like orphan called Heathcliff, who soon becomes the absolute apple of old Earnshaw's eye, his favourite child. To quote, This endurance made old Earnshaw furious when he discovered his son persecuting the poor fatherless child as he called him. He took to Heathcliff strangely, believing all that he said and petting him high above Cathy, who was too mischievous and wayward for a favourite. And yet this poor fatherless child despite all the love and care of old Earnshaw, would go on one day to actually bully and mistreat his own son, Linton. And on Linton's arrival at Wuthering Heights to reside with his father, Heathcliff said to him, Now, my bonny lad, you're mine, and we'll see if one tree won't grow as crooked as another, with the same wind to twist it. And I think this great novel sparked so much debate around the psychology of our genetics. Are we all our parents' children? Or are we somehow the outcome of how we are nurtured and the influences around us? I wonder how many of you Kalinchi men are just like your fathers? And if so, do you perceive this as a negative thing or a positive outcome? Is it something you're proud of or something you'd rather to change? Now a little closer to home and a bit more contemporary is a poem called Digging by Irish poet Seamus Heaney. And in this touching and insightful poem we get a glimpse of the men who went before Heaney, his father and his grandfather, as we read of how they took to a day's work his father adeptly handling a spade in the garden, and a glimpse then of a young Heaney taking milk for his grandfather to drink whilst cutting turf. And both are depicted in this brief poem as men with the capacity for a great day's graft, for a great day of manual labour. And this is a sentiment I'm very familiar with, where I grew up, in rural County Antrim, a man was often afforded calibre and respect by how well he could graft and how hard he could work. It is this idea that a man's worth is somehow formed by strength and endeavour, by sweat and labour. And whilst we know that not all men have these particular qualities, I feel there still resounds some harbouring of such mindsets today, particularly I feel in some more rural communities, 
and what pressure this exerts on the man who does not find his best qualities in physical labour or hard graft. I hope that it is only by context and not necessity that I point out the glaring shortfalls in how scripture, classic literature and society have typically depicted men. Macho, brave, courageous, stoic, the provider, having strength, a role model, the head of the family, the patriarch in our society, to reference just a few terms, what pressure many of our men must feel. Sadly, in 2018, 228 men in Northern Ireland took their own lives. And men in our country are three times more likely to commit suicide than women. Reasons can include trauma, unemployment, debt, social isolation, family breakdown, homelessness and chronic disease to name a few. What pressure they must have felt to conform, to cope, to struggle on and to do so with an appearance of stoicism and decorum like everything is fine and it can't be otherwise. Well, I wish today to challenge those stereotypes, and I know I'm not the first. I wish to offer a reassurance to all those men listening in today. It's okay not to be okay. You do not have to be anything other than true to yourself. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to feel weak. It's okay to cry and it's okay not to want to live up to those socially constructed stereotypes of what a man should or should not be. Be yourself. Be the man that our God created you to be and in doing so you're being true to your creator. And it is in that openness and that honesty that the key to many of life's struggles lie. And if you are struggling with any of these issues today, please do contact the various support groups and organisations that are available to help. Samaritans, Lifeline, the Men's Advisory Project, or Aware NI, or indeed, please do touch base with your minister. I leave you with something a little more light-hearted, some fantastic advice from the wonderful Dolly Parton, who says, find out who you are and do it on purpose. Amen. Now, just in case you were in any doubt about how diverse men and fathers are, the following is a little something to jog your memory.
to the glory of our God, this day and forevermore. Spread a little light and a lot of love. God bless you all. Amen. Bet you're all missing these today, Kalinchi men. So in your honour. Till next time, stay safe and God bless.